Hello guys, welcome to another video of the series of code intro. We are going to solve the problem. It's called maximal square. Given an m into n binary matrix filled with zeros and ones, you have to find the largest square containing only ones and return its area. Okay, let's try to take an example to understand this question better. So we have to find the largest square. So let's note the terms. First of all, it has to be a square. Okay, that means the side length have to be same. Both the length and width have to be same. Okay. Second thing is it should contain only ones. Okay, and you have to find the largest such square which has only ones. Okay, let's try to think how we can solve this problem. So very 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 brute force approach will be right. See what is the minimum square that you can get? You can get of size one, right? And after that you can get of size two, and then you can get of size three, and so on, right? So the brute force approach will be list down a square of size one, right? So if you have found one square of size one, which is having one, then one will be your answer. Okay. For size two, you can check all the squares of size two, right? You can keep on drawing all squares of size two and check if you are able to find a square, right, of size two. For example, here you have found a square of size two, which is having all ones. So you have satisfied the property. So you are satisfying for two also. Okay. And then you can try to similarly find for three. Okay. You can find three side square. When you try to find three side squares, in this case, right, when you list down all the three side squares and you try to see if any of the square contains all ones, in this case you will fail. Right. So in this case, your answer will be failing because you will not be able to find. Okay. Then you can try building four, but there is no need to try building four side squares, right? Oh, sorry, this will be four side square. There is no need to try building four side square if you cannot find any three side square at all, right? Because if you cannot find a three side square, how will you ever find a four side square? Okay, so this sort of gives us a hint into optimal solution. See, for building three side square, you need to have a two sized square consisting of all ones, okay? And for building two side square, you need at least one sized squares consisting of all ones. If this is satisfied, then you can go to the next case. If this is satisfied, then you can try to build three side squares containing all ones. Okay. So, it sort of uh, gives us a hint that, see, if you have found one side square, maybe from that you can find two side square. How? Okay, let's try to take an example to understand. Suppose you have, okay, one sized squares, right? You need to find a two side square which has all ones. Okay. Suppose you didn't know the last uh, letter was a one or a zero. Okay. Suppose you didn't know uh, whether it will form a two side square or not. You are still seeing it. But okay. Let's say that. Okay. Let's say that these three are forming one side square. That means all the three are ones, right? You have three one side square. And if this also turns out to be a one, that's it. Voila. You have found a two side square. Okay. But if any of this was 0, right, any of this was 0 and even if this was 1, then in this case your answer will still be maximum you have one sized square only because this is not a two sized square consisting of only ones, okay. So this is the trick here. See, if you find all the three squares which are uh, ones, right, and then your last number also turns out to be a 1, you have found a two sized square which has all ones. Let's try to take uh, example for, uh, let's say, a bigger example, okay. Let's say for n equal to 3. Now you are trying to build again for n equal to 3. Okay. So in this case, suppose here everything is 1. Okay. Till now. And suppose you somehow know that everything is 1 here. In this case, if you find a 1, you can change this answer. Right. You can change this answer. See, if, if everything is 1 and this last number is also 1. In that case, what? In that case, right, you know that your maximum answer is now 3 size square. How will you know this, right? See, if we can store here instead of these values, see, let's try building from the very beginning. How do we find a three side square? First of all, all this, everything should be one, okay? But we cannot keep making three side square and keep checking if everything is one again and again. Let's do one thing. Suppose we know first number is one, okay? We'll let it be one. Next number is one, we'll let it be one. Here it is one, here it is one, we'll let it be one, okay? Now let's say here we know that, okay? Instead of 1, we will change it to 2, okay? So, what do I mean? See, we have found 3 squares which are 1, okay? That means we have 3 1 size squares and if this number is also 1 in the matrix, that means we have found a 2 size square for the first time because this is a 2 size square. So, we will let here be 2, okay? Now, let's come to this square. Now, in this square, again, what do you see? You see that there are 2 1 size square on the top and there is 
one square which is a two side square like this and there are one side squares like this okay so here the maximum possible is a two side square because see this is a two side square this is this square is also satisfying the answer this is also satisfying this is also satisfying that means here everything is one if if this number is also one here maximum you can have a two side square okay now let's come to this um, cell in this cell again you see the topmost is having one right topmost is a one side square and here it is a two side square right it's a two side square here it is a one side square so you are looking at all these three cells and you find out that okay what is the minimum of these three values minimum is one right minimum is the constraint so you have a one side square and one plus one is two that means this at max can be a two side square why why this at max can be a two side square because these are squares ending with one right i mean these are one side square only so it will be 2 here okay now let's take this example then it will be clear so now in this case you see that you have three two side square this is also two side square this is also two side square this is also two side square that means what that means these all cells are satisfying your property right that means you have two side squares okay if you have all two side squares surrounding you and if this number also turns out to be one that means you have fulfilled the criteria and you have a three side square okay so now this number will become three so that is the logic in this question so from previously stored values you are trying to find out the next values now let's do a dry run with this example and then it will be perfectly clear okay. so this is the matrix now let me fill the dp matrix which is a so we are using previously stored values to find out the new answer. That's why it's a dynamic programming problem. Okay, let us see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So initially the maximum square that we have is one side square. Now this is a square that is ending with 0, right? So in this case, you cannot form a square because this is having 0, right? This is having 0. We for in the question we need squares to have only 1. But if this is 0, that means the answer here is also 0. There is no 0 side square. I mean the maximum side square which is ending at this cell is 0 size. Because this is 0. You cannot form a square using this cell. Okay. Using this cell you cannot form a square which will give us our answer. So it is 0. Okay. Now let's see this value. So again it is 1. Because you have a 1 side square. And for 0 it will be 0. Similarly you can fill the first row. First row and first column filling is very easy. Whenever you see a 1 fill a 1. Otherwise fill a 0. Okay. Now let's go to this cell. Now in this cell C, we have to see if, see this can either, this is very simple. If it is a 0, you cannot have a square, right, with this cell that will satisfy your answer. Because what is the question itself? The question itself says that you have to contain only 1s for your answer square, right? So if this is a 0, it will not form an answer. You can simply fill 0, okay? Now let's go to the next cell. Now this is 1. Here it gets interesting. When it is 1, what do you do? See, this can be a part, this cell can be part of a two side square, one side square, three side square, four side square. But how do you know? So, to know, to get a hint of what this cell can constitute, you have to look at these three values, okay? So, when we look at these three values, we know that, see, minimum of this, it will be the constraint. What is the constraint? Constraint will be whichever is minimum of these values. Now, you see, it has zeros, right? That means this cell can never be a part of a bigger square like this. It can never be a two side square. It can never be a three side square because these are zeros. So what do you do? When you look at its neighboring cells, right? When you look at the neighboring DP matrix, you see the minimum. Now the minimum is zero, okay? So, but this is one. So what it will be? This one can form a single square, right? So the maximum it can form, answer it can form is a single one side square. So it will be one, okay? Answer will be one here. Because these are 0, so it cannot form any uh, any other square larger than 1. 1 will be the maximum it can form, which is itself. It cannot be a part of a bigger answer of 2 side square because these are zeros. So it can clearly not be, not form a 2 side square as the answer. Okay, now let's go to the next cell. Next cell, again we see top is 0, right? So maximum it can, it can form is 1, which is the square itself. Again, let's come to this cell. Again, it has a top cell 0. So in this case also the maximum is 1. Okay, now let's come to this cell. For, for this cell, we have already filled the value. For row and column, it's very easy. We have already filled the values. Let's come to this cell. Again, top is 0, right? So, the maximum answer will be 1. Let's come to this cell. Now, in this cell also, you have diagonal 0. See, so it cannot be a part of a solution of a two-side square because in this case, the diagonal is 0, right? So, it cannot form a two-side square. What will be the answer? Answer will simply be 1, which is the cell itself, okay? Let's go to the next value. 
Now next here it gets interesting. Okay. So for this cell, notice that you have three squares. Okay. Which are all one. That means what? Now it can be a part of a solution. Okay. Let's see if there are any constraints or not. There are no constraints, right? Because why are there no constraints? Because see, all its neighbors are satisfying the answer. They are saying we are each one size squares. So what will it be? It will be a two side square. It can form a two side square as the answer. Because these are all one. One plus one is one. One, sorry, one plus one is two. So the answer will be two here. Okay. Now let's come to this cell. Now this cell is also seeing it at its neighbors. Its neighbors are also happy neighbors. Okay. All of them are ones. All of its neighbors are ones. So it's also very happy. It is saying that its neighbors are good neighbors and it can also form a maximum two side square. How do you know maximum is two and not three? For it to be a three, what will, if every, if all of this would have been two, then we could have filled three here. Okay. But what are these? These are one, one and two, right? That means there are constraints, which is the minimum. Minimum among 1, 1 and 2 is 1. That means what? That means maximum you are having 1 side square. Above that you have zeros, right? See here you have 1 side square. Above this you have 0. So it cannot form a 3 side square because here you have zeros. So maximum here is 1, 1. Okay. Uh, so here you can only have 1 and 1. And here you can you have a 2 side square possible. That's why we have written 2 here. So this side is okay. But there's a problem from this side, right? That there are zeros here. That is why you have filled the answer as 1 and 1 here. Okay. So in this case, this can at max be a 2 side square. That's why you are taking minimum of these 3 values. You are taking minimum of 1, 1 and 2, which are its 3 neighbors. Okay. So minimum is 1 and then 1 plus 1 is 2 okay that means it can at max form a two side square okay now let's go to the next value so next you have um the last row which is left to fill let's fill it quickly and then we'll move forward to coding it so again here you have zero so answer will be zero here again zero answer will be zero here you have one so in this case what will be the answer the answer will be what is the minimum now you see here you have a zero so this is the constraint you cannot have a larger square because you have a zero right so the answer will simply be one now in this case it's zero so answer will anyway be zero okay now let me take another quick example before we move to the solution so that it's more clearer okay now let us let me raise this okay so if instead of um okay 0 I had 1 here and I had 1 here what will what will have been the solution solution would have changed okay let's see that so this is 0 so anyway it will be 0 okay but now let us come here okay now let us come here when we are seeing the cell for the first time right it's going to look at its neighbor minimum value is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 so we can have a one side square here okay now let's come at this cell now this cell will again look at its neighbors minimum of its neighbors is again 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 now, so it can form a two side square right you can see that the two side square is the solution okay now let us come at this last cell now when this last cell is looking at its three neighbors it is seeing all of them are forming two side squares right so this is also a two side square this is also a two side square this is also a two side square right that means it all these are ones okay this cell is seeing that all its three neighbors are forming two side squares so this can be a three side square two plus one is equal to three so it will finally form a three side square which will be our answer so this this is how you solve this problem now let us um, see one more thing we have to return the area so in this case we will get maximum value as three but you have to return the area right so you have to return three into three which will be nine so that is one thing which we will note okay now let's quickly write the code for this so m is equal to matrix dot size which is the number of rows n is equal to number of columns which we have so that is matrix of zero dot size okay now for int i equal to zero i less than m i plus plus okay for int j equal to zero j less than n j plus plus okay we have to build our answer so let me declare our answer variable which is initially zero we will keep changing it and let me also build a dp matrix which we just discussed okay so it will also be of the same size and let me quickly write the solution and um, time complexity of this solution that we just discussed will be o of m into n which is we are just iterating all the elements once because we are just using two for loops okay and space complexity will also be same which you can optimize later so we'll just discuss this solution for now okay so 
now for the first row and first column it's very simple right if i is 0 or j is 0 building the answer is very simple at max you can have a one one sized highest um, cell right so one when one can at max be your answer for the first row or first column right so it's very simple if matrix of ij is equal to 1 right in that case dp of ij will simply be equal to 1 okay first row first column it's very easy else now for all the other cells okay what you have to do if it is 0 if if matrix of ij is 0 answer is simply 0 by default it will be 0 okay otherwise what you can do you can give this condition right so if it is 1 in that case what will be your answer so dp of ij what, you, what were we doing? We were just taking minimum of its three neighbors, right? So, minimum of dp of i minus 1, j, dp of i, j minus 1, and dp of i minus 1, j minus 1. Now, in C++, the minimum function cannot be defined like this. You will have to loop it in another minimum function. So, let me just loop it like this. Because minimum function takes two parameters, it always compares two values, okay? So, I will have to give two minimum functions. First, it will get the minimum of these two values, then it will get the minimum of that with this value okay so if whatever is the minimum constraint right you can add that to one if answer of minimum of all this turns out to be zero and if it is a one cell it will be zero plus one one will be the answer okay so the, this is it that is a simple solution now at last you can just change your answer answer is equal to max of answer okay comma dp of i j and finally what you can do is you can return answer into answer so that's it now let's run the code and see if it's working okay there is one syntax error let's run the code again and see if it's working okay it's working let me submit the solution that's it thank you for being patient and listen